Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. In today's video, I am going to be taking this Goodwill dresser I got for 40 bucks, building a new base for it, and I am trying tons of new products. I've got a new paint, I've got a new top coat to me, new top coat brushes, uh, what else? a new stain that you've never seen before on my channel. So there's lots of new, new, new. So if you wanna see this makeover, just keep watching. I got this dresser from Goodwill for $40. It has a lot of laminate, it's pretty cheap, but I love using pieces like this to try out new products and new techniques. And before we jump into it, I wanna share one of my new favorite things. Today's video is sponsored by Yuani, and I want to share with you about their super cool V98 Plus Robot Vacuum Cleaner. It also comes with a self-emptying dustbin, and I can start vacuuming my house from anywhere with a touch of the button on their easy-to-use app. I am really impressed by the cleaning power of this thing, and I love that it doesn't run randomly around the room. It goes in a smart Z-shape cleaning pattern, so it gets maximum floor coverage, and it cleans really efficiently. It also has a easy to use mop attachment, and I can set up no mop zone so it won't mop the carpet. And with the touch of a button, I can send it back to its docking station to empty out its dust into the dustbin and recharge. The dustbin holds up to four weeks worth of cleaning. I'm talking dust, pet hair, debris. This is saving me so much time. It cleans my house while I'm out working on furniture. I know you guys are gonna love it too. So check out my link in the description box to get your own. So while my vacuum is going to work inside, I'm gonna start working out here in the garage. I am starting by flipping this thing on its back and removing as much of the trim base as I can. I'm gonna replace this with a more modern wood base. I'm gonna be building it my own. I did this a while back and I'm following the same plans. This is the DIY wife wood base. So check out those other videos if you wanna see how I did the first one. For this one, I'm having to chop off the side. So I just took a T square and marked where I needed to cut. And then I'm using my jigsaw and a clean cut blade to cut the sides off. Next, I'm getting my measurements. So I'm just measuring all around the piece and then I'm gonna deduct a fourth of an inch to each of those measurements so that it's a little bit smaller than the base. I'm using one by threes for the frame and then two by twos for the legs. I'm gonna use my miter saw to cut everything down to length. When I am cutting my one by three boards that are gonna make up the frame, I need to make sure that I am deducting three inches from my total length because I have those two by twos that are gonna act as my feet. And I know this is weird, but a two by two is actually one and a half inches thick. So multiply that times two, that's three. And that's what I need to deduct from my length. Now I'm grabbing the two by two to cut my legs and you just need to decide how high you want your piece off the ground. This piece was pretty low, so I ended up cutting eight inch legs. Here's a shot of all of my pieces once my cuts were done. And I gave everything a nice sand just to make sure it's smooth and ready to stain. I'm gonna use a Craig jig to drill some pocket holes in my boards to build my base and screw it all together. I'm using one by three boards and one by three boards are not one inch thick, they're three fourths inch thick. So I'm setting up my drill bit and moving up this collar to kind of lock this in place here. So it'll drill three fourths inch holes. As you can see, it'll stop here and won't go any further than it needs to. And you also set that same thickness on the top piece where the holes are. And then you just clamp this in and you're ready to go. Mine is three inches thick, so I'm just drilling into this first hole and the second hole. It's really easy to figure all this stuff out. You can just look it up on the Craig website. That's how I figured out how I needed to do all my settings correctly. I'm gonna repeat that process at the end of every one by three board that I have. That's going to screw them all together into the legs to create the base. But then I need the base to attach to the piece. So I'm gonna flip them flat and I'm gonna do pocket holes on each end and then put a few in the middle as well so that I can drill the base to the dresser. 
The last thing I'm going to do before I start screwing this whole thing together is cut some angles for my front feet. I'm starting by cutting a 45 degree guide board and keeping that in place. And then I'm moving my jigsaw blade to about 30 degrees and marking off where I want that cut. And then I'm going to clamp this piece to the miter saw so I don't have to hold it with my hand. This is a lot safer than the way that I did it in the previous video. Um, and this really worked out. Safety is so important when you're working with power tools and it made it really easy easy to make the exact same cut on the second foot. And if you're thinking, Christina, this is great, but I don't have any of these really cool power tools that you have, keep watching my channel because I'm working on a really big giveaway for December that just might help you out. All my lumber is select pine, so I'm gonna use this screw that is for softwoods, and it's an inch and a quarter. That is what they recommend for this size thickness of boards. One thing that hasn't changed is that I didn't get the right clamps to clamp this together, so I'm using the side of the dresser as a guide, and it worked really well. And I'm just using these screws. They're good for indoor or outdoor, but you could just get the indoor ones. We had these left over from another project, so that's why I'm using them and I'm just screwing every little pocket hole that I have. Once I had that all screwed together, I clamped on the base to make sure it was the right length and it fit. And then I flipped the dresser over on its top and sanded out the bottom to make sure it was level and smooth before I added the base to the dresser. Once I got the base on, I realized I didn't cut the sides completely level, so I'm fixing that with a little wood epoxy and a filling in this gap I had on this one side. Once that was dry, I sanded it down and then I was ready to stain the base. I'm going to be using a Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain in Tobacco Road. This is a water-based stain, so you just squeeze it out and then brush everything in and then you wipe back the excess. This is really easy to use and it matches the hardware that I have in mind for this dresser perfectly. Now that the base is built, I am ready to start working on the dresser. So I'm gonna remove all the hardware and the drawers and give it a good cleaning with some TSP soap and then rinse it with clean water. I'm taping off the bottom with painter's tape and plastic wrap so I don't get any paint or cleaning solution on my base. I'm doing new hardware and want to get rid of this big fan <laughs> that is on the top. So I mixed up some Bondo to fill that in. I ended up having to do two coats of Bondo to fill all these holes in detailing. The sides and top are laminate, so I'm gonna be using a primer just to make sure that my paint is gonna stick really well. You technically don't have to scuff sand with this primer. It says that you don't have to, but you know, I have a sander and just for insurance, I did. And I'm gonna use a fabric 3 8 nap to roll this primer on. This primer is water-based and has easy cleanup. You normally see me use bin on here, but I wasn't worried about bleed through on this piece, just wanted this one for adhesion. After my first coat was dry, I decided to drill my new hardware holes and I got this cool little contraption from Amazon and it worked really well. I was able to set my uh, hardware exactly apart and this really holds it in place so that my drill doesn't jump around. The biggest I could go with my drill though wasn't big enough for my hardware holes. So once I drilled the initial holes, then I grabbed my 1 4th drill bit and it made the holes a little bit bigger so that the hardware would fit in.
They were a perfect fit, so I went ahead and used my hardware template to drill all the holes. This was so much easier, but it still took me a long time, but I'm glad I invested in this thing. And the hardware looks awesome. I've had it forever. I'm really excited to put this on the final product. I did a quick sand with a 220 sandpaper to smooth my primer out, and then I went ahead and added my second coat. This is ready to top coat in an hour, so I sanded it smooth again. And now the star of the show, I'm going to be using Lily Moon paint in the color Heavenly for the first time today. This is a new furniture paint that has just hit the scene that was designed by Miss Yari at Lily Moon Vintage. And it is a chalk style furniture paint, like the paints you see on my channel, but I was very intrigued at the viscosity of this paint. It's a lot thinner than other paints that I typically work with, but it's still that matte chalk style finish. Um, it smooths out really beautifully. I'm using a zebra brush to apply it and they pair really well together. I didn't have to add any water or mist my piece at all to get this to the consistency I wanted. I really loved the way the first coat went on and it went on really great over this primer. I'll definitely have to try it out on just a regular piece of furniture and I'd love to spray it too. But using the Palm Pro, it spread out really nicely and evenly. And you know, it went pretty far. The coverage is really good on this. I'm not surprised that this paint is so great because Yari is a furniture artist has been doing this for years and she just really knocked it out of the park with this. If you guys are wanting to try this, you can use my code prettydistress10 to save 10% on your order. And I'm also going to do a giveaway. Check out the description box for details on that. And then I did have to grab a little artist brush to get into these little indents on my trim here. I didn't want to take this piece off. I like the character of it. I let it dry for two hours and then I came in to do my second coat. And the only thing I did differently on the second coat is I did mist my surface and my brush a little bit. I just find that it helps spread out the paint because it really wants to absorb into that absorbent chalk style paint that second coat does. Um, so just misting that second coat really helped me smooth everything out. Two coats of coverage worked really well and I only ended up using uh, less than half of this can so I can definitely do another project. The coverage was great. Before I top coat, I like to put the drawers in just to see if there's any spots that I missed when they were out of the piece. And good thing I did because I needed to do a couple of third coat touch-ups. I told you this video was full of new products. Another product that just hit the market is Zebra's Top Coat Brushes. These are made with natural filaments and meant to give you an ultra smooth finish. So I'm going to be using these with Verithane um, water-based polyurethane in the satin finish. This is one of Yari's favorite top coats and I have never used this before on my channel. So we're going in and may I say that I love this huge top coat brush from Zebra. It is three inches and it helped me get these flat surfaces fast. And I used the Palm Pro one on all the trim and smaller areas, and that one was great as well. I really like the feel of these brushes, and they spread the top coat on super smooth. But you can use them with paint and um, stains. You don't just have to use them with top coat. It is so exciting to see Zebra come out with some new products, and I think you guys are really going to love this. They're selling it in a three-piece kit right now, and they're doing pre-orders for them, and everything is going to ship on November 25th, and I have a discount code right now for another week, so you should get these ordered. This is my first time working with this Verithane top coat. It's water-based, so it's milky white and it's gonna dry crystal clear like other top coats you've seen here on my channel. Um, I think I'd like to try their flat. I like this, but it's a little shiny for me because it is a satin finish. After I finished this first top coat, I let it dry for two hours and then came in and did a second coat. And I can see why furniture artists really like this top coat. It was really nice to work with. I might use it again in the future. I ended up doing a third coat on this piece and I did the drawers last and put them in the piece again just to make sure that everything was nice and even. And after that dried, I decided to use these little felt pads on the inside of my drawers because these drawers do touch the painted frame. And when that happens, I like to just use these pads because you're less likely to see chipping from pulling that drawer in and out. The last thing I'm doing before I add hardware, I cut out a piece of a brown paper grocery bag and I'm just going to buff the entire piece with this. This is something I've learned from Yari and I did it on a piece recently and I really love this. It just makes your top coat buttery smooth. It just like buffs it a little bit. It's really nice. 
And this hardware was all a little bit different, so I just placed them in <laughs> before I got the screws for the back. These are from Hobby Lobby, and I've had them forever, and I've been dying to use them, and they were just perfect for this piece and this base, so I love them. Oh my gosh, I hope you're still with me. This was a lot of work <laughs> on a really cheap piece, but I love the way this turned out. I got to use a new paint, some new brushes, um, these pulls I've wanted to use forever, and I got to practice on another base. I'm still learning, I'm still growing, um, but I really do love the way this piece turned out. I wish it would have taken less than two weeks, but you know, you gotta learn. Thanks for joining me for today's furniture makeover. I will be back next week with another project. Until then, you can check out some of my other videos before you leave. Thanks for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time.